Hello, today I'll make a mess several times while I try strange methods to create a tribal Mudhats diorama. For the base and ground of this diorama, I'll try to make an earthy paste that can be shaped over a cardboard piece. The paste is good for thick snow when white, so perhaps it works with other colors as well. The ingredients are baking soda, PVA glue and some paint. You just mix everything together. While mixing you can get a desired thickness by adding more or less of soda or glue, or adjust it with a bit of water. It's a bit thick, so I added more glue and also black to make the goop darker. I know, looks delicious. After some mixing, I thought the consistency was good enough. Next I marked the size of my diorama and did not cut the cardboard into the right shape yet. In this way, I can avoid warping in the future. Good, I then applied the paste. I just scooped it on and quickly realized I needed more, so I mixed some more. Hmm, I ran out of PVA glue, so I'll have to use some pieces of styrofoam to add volume to the ground. Ok, I got some pieces in place to represent mounts. I spread out the rest of the goop while thinking of other, more reasonable ways of getting the same or better results. After that, I tapped over everything with the brush in order to create an uneven, somewhat natural looking surface. I would like to add more, but I'm out of glue. Now I just let the paste dry, safe from warping. This material turns less glossy as it dries. I decided to get more glue and then made more of the goop. If this works, the paste is a good, easily shapeable material for earth or sand dunes, as it can be any color you decide. I applied this as usual and here I built a larger hill, just filling out with styrofoam first. Out of curiosity, I made the paste much runnier by adding less baking soda, just to see what happens. Anyway, here on the hill I'll place one of the filthy mud huts. The huts are built from clay. I'll start with a small one first. If I wanted to build a mud hut, I'd stack large slabs of mud to make the walls, and perhaps add some plant fibers into the mud. The miniature hut is easily made from little clay bits, simply stacked on each other. I made sure to squeeze them together so everything stays intact, or so I thought. There we go, then I used these beads to imprint some ornaments on a few areas. I'll use these beads for the totems as well. The larger mud hut will have two rooms, I intend these to be fully playable, a few miniatures should fit inside. Here I made a tiny ritual site, from the excess clay I had cut out. I let all of this dry overnight, then painted the huts with brown. What worked best was to carelessly brush on a layer that is thin enough for the white surface of the clay to shine through. The way I built the clay resulted in not so strong huts, but no worries, I'll glue all pieces onto the diorama that will be durable enough. Here we can already see how good these patterns look, I'll do some dry brushing later. Before the next step, I also painted the ritual site with black, then wiped off paint with my fingers to reveal the patterns. Hmm, now it's kind of grey, good. The roof is made from cardstock and some sort of fibrous material. First I cut out a somewhat round shape for one of the smaller huts. I cut here and then glued it into a cone. In order to attach the fur as attached roof, I applied plenty of PVA glue on the cardstock. Then placed on bundles of fur. 
The fur is from an old jacket I don't use anymore. I believe using thin hempen rope or straws also work well, probably even better as they would be easier to attach on the roof. Yes, it's a bit tricky. Well, that's good enough. I sealed in the fur with watered down glue. Later, the excess fur can be cut away. The larger roof was made much in the same way. It was easier with more space to work with. Here I glued on two layers of fur bundles. Let's hope it gives a good, realistic look. When applying the diluted PVA glue, I shaped a ridge in the middle. Now that the glue was dry, I cut off the excess fur. Looks okay already. Okay, then I brushed over the dirt ground with just brown fur. The paste on the hill was too runny. Well, now I know. The extra cardboard is a handy surface for paint. Here I gently brushed over with a light brown. It should be enough, as I'll cover large portions of the ground with green flocking. Jungle trees would be great for this, but I don't have any good ideas for that right now. Instead I cut out large, leaf-shaped bits from cardstock for foliage. I bent the bits like this before placing them in with a dab of PVA glue. This is very annoying and I wish I had hot glue. Somehow I got the bushes done around the still muddy mess. Still not sure these plants will work, I painted them with an earthy brown first. Then I dry brushed with just green. Here the textures of the previous paint layer do some of the work. Next I dry brushed with yellow, focusing on the upper parts of the plants. Now I can apply the flocking. I checked where the huts fit and then I applied glue over large portions of the ground. I made sure to cover the area around each plant I made. Then I sprinkled on basil first, because I don't care to buy real flocking. I only covered a bit with the basil, the rest with dill. I just dropped on lots of it and then threw off the excess. I think it looks much better now. Moving on. I dry brushed the mud huts with a light brown. While painting, I spotted some white dots. I'll cover these later with a dark wash. To reveal more of the patterns, I dry brushed certain areas with an off white. While at it, I also brushed on this thing. I glued on the huts. Once they were in place, I applied plenty of glue at the base of the wall, and also some on the walls. My idea was to blend in the huts with the ground by applying flocking. In this way I could also cover large gaps between the walls and the uneven ground. Great, all of the glue is now covered. Time to make the totems. I carved deep textures into a barbecue stick. Then glued on a few metallic beads the ones I used to make textures on the clay. I made several of these in different sizes and shapes. By the way, if you like the content, make sure to like and subscribe, so you can see more simple miniature crafts in the future. And I apologize for the voice, I don't know what's up, it feels like something is upon me. To make a simple wash, I mixed brown and black paint in water. I applied this on the totems first. It settles nicely into grooves and textures. I used this wash to cover the white spots on the huts as well. The wash makes the textures more defined. And then I darkened some parts of the thatched roofs, especially where the cardstock is slightly visible. It seems that the army painter wash worked much better for the beads and the skull. I also applied it on some of the leaves. While at it, I also applied some of my wash on some areas of the dirt to make them darker. The washes do take a while to dry, so I used the time to cut out the final shape of the diorama.
While cutting the cardboard, I noticed some areas were missing flocking, so I went ahead and fixed that. This piece became a bit larger than initially planned. That explains the naked cardboard. I covered the edges of the cardboard with some acrylic texture paste I have had laying around a long time. It was already partially dried so I had to cut the jar open. After a while I painted the edges black. There are certainly better ways to cover the edges. This is just what I had around. I painted the totem poles with bright paints. Red first, coloring some rings and details that go around the beads. Then I painted with blue while still leaving some space for the yellow. There we go. I stole these ideas from my friend Jacob. Thanks. I glued on the totems along with some dill, that I sprinkled on the extra glue. It is dusk. As you travel further, you discover a small village of the lizard folk tribe. Sneaking up towards the mud huts, you notice no movement, and soon realize all of the filthy mud huts are empty. Remember the rumored tribal necromancers? A sealed coffin! A branch cracks in the distance. It's a trap! At times this build was frustrating because it looked like a pile of poop for the first few minutes. Gladly, all worked out in the end. But I'm not sure about the PVA paste though. There are certainly better ways that you might know about. Now go ahead and watch more terrain and miniature videos where I don't sound like I'm choking on potatoes. Do subscribe if you enjoy the videos.